this is Stefan Schmidt for InsiderIowa.com. Yesterday we found out that the Iowa Homeland Security Department uh, website and ancillary sites had been hacked. They shut them down. Uh, they wouldn't answer any questions and kept referring uh, the media to other people for comments who then referred them back. So I'm going to go talk to Doug Jacobson and Mike McCoy uh, about um, protecting websites, identity theft, and other topics. So we'll see you in their office. Well, here we are. Let's see if our colleagues and friends are in the office already. I guess Doug Jacobson is not in this room. Am I in the right direction at least? He's on a conference call. Yes. Well, good. Yeah. Well, we're here in uh, the building where a lot of high-tech stuff is done and a lot of information security is, is managed. Uh, one of the problems that we have is we no longer have computers like this, no, which were simple, yep. and you couldn't really hack into those. You know, you had to pretty much come and steal them from an office and then get the information. But now we are in a different period in time when everybody is networked and somebody in the, on the other end of the world can basically break into your computer. And of course that's what's been happening in Iowa. Uh, 80,000 people's homes basically got hacked and broken into when the Iowa Racing and Gaming Commission uh, website was hacked and information stolen. Imagine what would happen if 80,000 homes in Des Moines were suddenly broken into at the same time in one afternoon. We'd call out the National Guard, but we don't do that for, for computer problems. What do you think about the break-in into the uh, Homeland Security website in Des Moines, sir? What is your name, by the way? Hi, I'm Tom Daniels. Yeah, I know. Hello. Tom Daniels is one of the people that protects us from the bad guys. So it's interesting since it sounds like the attackers were primarily interested in uh, essentially counting coup or uh, leaving a comment that at least in this case the attack was probably somewhat limited to uh, you know probably somewhat limited to uh, vandalism but this does show the fact that even those who are sensitive to security often mess up don't do a good job and can lead to problems. Well, all we want is your, your comments about the, you were saying that, that you'd been looking at the evolution of, of malware. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, one way to compare the evolution of malware is to look at the, uh, um, when they used to run numbers, uh, when you looked at, when you go back a couple decades, the numbers would be run out of the neighborhood barber shop or the dry cleaners on the corner. Um, then organized crime got involved, it became organized, um, then also corrupt. And with malware, it started off where you could actually look at um, an email and see that there was broken English or just really bad grammar, and you could tell that it wasn't, it wasn't a normal email. It didn't sound like it came from the person uh, who it said sent it. Um, but then organized crime got involved, they started adding uh, translators so the English would be okay. And then, as that started gaining funding and money, they started bringing in an actual psychologists. They would hire them out of college to make sure that not only did the email seem right, but it was built in such a way to entice you to actually open it. Well, uh, my comment was, we have to ask ourselves, I mean, right now we're talking about, we talk about Web 2.0 on a lot of websites. The thing is, I think a lot of the th things on government sites or, you know, specifically the Homeland Security site, is what we call static 
information. There's people clicking on the links to go to that page. We, if we know it's going to be a static page, we don't have to go to a database to pull the appropriate content and to have nice interactive menus. While it may not look as polished as a, a Web 2.0 site that has you know, a lot of different uh, multimedia going on, it's a lot easier to secure something that is set, it's static. We don't have to go in and for every user dynamically access a lot of different machines, a lot of different information to pull that page together. So from a security standpoint, we would have that file sitting there and it's just going to be delivered to the person instead of we have to worry about generating all this content. So tell me, what is your name again? Uh, ben Anderson. I'm uh, one of Tom Daniels' uh, PhD students. Very good. Now, let me ask you a question, both Tom and you. Um, when did the Iowa Homeland Security um, Office call you then to get some input from you on this hack? When, when, when did they call? Uh, they've called. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so they haven't called any, either of you. And, uh, and Okay. I think that it would be helpful because uh, you've, you know what's going on with uh, security. And it would be helpful if state agencies cooperated more. And Iowa State University is a... State University. It's a great resource for us. So um, this is uh, Doug Jacobson's office.